Welcome to Move Classroom Systems and Structure. Meet Mr. Ramirez. He's creating a behavior management plan for his classroom and has some questions. I know I should assign seats, but how can I group students in their assigned seats? According to Marzano, having students work in cooperative groups is an important and effective instructional strategy. If the purpose of the group learning activity is to help struggling students, the research shows that heterogeneous groups may help most. On the other hand, if the purpose is to encourage medium ability groups to learn at high levels, homogeneous grouping would be better. The good news is you can do both using MOVE strategies for grouping. Here is how the strategy works. First, it's important to know that students should have assigned seats at the beginning of class every day. How often should I change their assigned seats? You should only change assigned seats when there is a behavior problem, so you may need to change them every day in the beginning, and later you may not change them at all. But grouping can be a planned activity or an ad hoc activity done deliberately to target instruction. Start with a grouping card. A grouping card allows each student to be a member of multiple groups based on the criteria you determine. This card would group a student into the red group, the odd numbers group, the stars, and the spades. This card would group a student into the purple group, the even numbers group, the ducks, and the diamonds. Tape a grouping card to the back of each chair based on the seating chart. Students can identify their seats based on the number you give them. Designate grouping areas in the room. You can use string to hang cards from the ceiling or laminated cards on a table or work area. When you're ready for students to move into groups, you can use a go word strategy to manage the transition, a timer to increase urgency, and beat the teacher to add motivation. To use the go word strategy, you have to practice with students. Here's how the strategy is used in the classroom. Students, when I say go and not before, you will stand up and go to the color on your card silently. You will have 20 seconds to get there. If you follow the instructions and get there on time, students will get a point. If not, the teacher will get a point. Ready? Go. 20, 19, 18, and so on. If the students make it to their spots in 20 seconds, silently, the students get a point. If they do not, the teacher gets a point and the students must try again. The goal is to minimize the transition time and the chaos that often comes with students moving around in the classroom. Do you have a strategy for managing their supplies? The best strategy to minimize transitions is to eliminate them when possible. One way to do that is with supplies. If your students sit in groups all the time, you can put a supply cart or table topper at their group table. If they sit as shoulder partners, a pencil bag works well to store supplies. You can have one student pass out the supplies and pick them up at the end of the class period. How about their journals? We keep them in a bin and the students grab them at the beginning of class. Having all students in one place is a challenge for behavior management. It would be better to have one student from each group pick up journals. Here's how I do it. I use duct tape to visually classify the notebooks so students can quickly identify the notebook all the way down to the student level. Each class period has its own color. I put the tape on the long side of the spine. Each group in the class period has its own color. I put the tape on the top of the spine sideways. Then each student in the group gets their own color sideways on the bottom. Your bookshelf might look like this. One student from each group retrieves the journals for their group and hands them out to each individual on their team. You can use a similar strategy for textbooks or other materials students may need. These are great strategies for structuring my classroom. But what about when we go to the library or the computer lab? You definitely do not want to abandon structure when you go to the computer lab or library. I recommend that you have a seating chart for the computer lab and the library. Also, do not ask students to go directly to the lab or library without coming to your class first, completing a warm-up, and following your Go Word command to leave the classroom. One area where I am struggling with structure is when the bell rings for my students to leave the classroom. This is another good opportunity to use Beat the Teacher as a strategy. Always have an exit ticket to put a lid on learning for the day. Practice dismissing students using a Go Word. If they leave quietly and turn in their exit ticket responses, the students get a point. If not, the teacher gets a point. 
Thank you for the strategies. I will have some great ideas for my behavior management plan.